what is the next big news that drops? What's the next morning we wake up with? And it's like, Tesla bought a billion of Bitcoin. What's the next news like that? Is it a big company? Is it, uh, I just kind of want to know your moonshot. I think here's the dynamic, right? Facebook, <clears throat> Apple, Google, <clears throat> Amazon. In my opinion, Facebook has the most to gain and needs to do this. Interesting. Like, Apple's got an iron lock on iOS. I mean, look how much power they have. A lot of power. Google has an has a really, really strong business and an iron lock on Android. Facebook is kind of the odd man out because they they need to have a mobile app that's running on iOS and Android. And I think Apple and Google, it's an opportunity for them. For Facebook, I think it's a necessity for them. They need to build it into WhatsApp and into Facebook Messenger and into the core. Hmm. Otherwise, they get squeezed. Michael Saylor predicted the huge Tesla Bitcoin buy and was the man we can thank for being responsible for Elon Musk getting into Bitcoin. And in this video, he gives a Bitcoin prediction that Facebook is going to be the next major US tech company converting their cash balance sheet into Bitcoin. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video where we talk through the cash balances of the top US listed companies, why Facebook is the most likely to be the next big name investor to move into Bitcoin. And also we go over one piece of recent Bitcoin data that suggests where the Bitcoin price is likely to go from here. Also, according to YouTube statistics, only a tiny percentage of people who watch my videos are actually subscribed. If you enjoy the video, consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind. Enjoy the video. Okay, that opens the door a lot quicker for Apple, for Amazon, for Google. And I'm waiting to know, and I'm kind of curious your take on who's that next big shoe to drop. I what you can see is uh, Square put out their announcement yesterday and or two days ago, and they said they added... Um, 1 million new users or 1 million new Bitcoin buyers in January. Okay. And so, and, and uh, they sold like 1.7 billion of Bitcoin in the fourth quarter. PayPal is paying attention. So now you want to play the game of Kingmaker. Here's the dynamic, right? Facebook, <clears throat> Apple, Google, <clears throat> Amazon. Especially, you've got the Facebook, Apple, Google dynamic, right? I mean, Google Android is struggling with iOS. Facebook is sitting between the two of them. They've got a, they've all got kind of a uncomfortable love-hate coopetition relationship. If all three of those companies, those big three, because they're all big and mobile, right? Amazon's the fourth, but especially Facebook, Google, mm -hmm. and Apple. Those three, if they do nothing, then Square and PayPal are going to consistently and gradually rip away their accounts. The reason that PayPal moved is they Square forced them to move. Right, when Square moved, PayPal had to move. Now, PayPal and Square are wrestling with this and it's possible that all three of the, the big three do nothing, in which case Square, that's the best thing that could happen for Square and PayPal, right? But it's not likely. There's that that phrase, you know, three people can keep a secret if two of them are dead. Well, I, you know, I, there's three. Okay, you can keep Bitcoin from exploding through the entire mobile space if all three of them agree not to compete with each other. <laughs> But I don't think that's going to happen. One of them's going to move. Yeah. In my opinion, Facebook has the most to gain and needs to do this. Interesting. Like, Apple's got an iron lock on iOS. I mean, look how much power they have. A lot of power. Google has an has a really really strong business and an iron lock on Android. Facebook is kind of the odd man out because they they need to have a mobile app that's running on iOS and Android and they're getting pressured by Apple with you know the latest privacy token uh, maneuvering and you can see the sparks flying there so how do I upgrade my application so that it is so valuable that a billion people say swear you will have to pry it from their cold dead fingers okay it's like you're going to take away my photos you're going to take away my friend my friendly chats 
or are you going to take away my money? Like when, when money flows in uh, to Facebook, then that's going to shift the balance of power. And it's, you know, it's offensive and it's defensive. It's a defensive thing. You kind of got to do it to protect yourself against, uh, against Apple and, and Google squeezing you on the platform. It's offensive because it's a way to, uh, to double or triple your value proposition to a billion people. I mean, what could be more important than giving a billion people a savings account that yields 200% tax-free interest per year? Like, I can't think of something. I also think, you know, the, 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 the wild card here is Amazon. Because yeah. this is a chance for, I mean, Amazon Pay, is it critical? I mean, compared to Apple Pay or Google Pay? I mean, no, right? Apple's, if I was in the pay business competing against Apple, I'm thinking, well, these guys control the operating system, they control the device. Mm -hmm. You better come up with something really compelling if you're going to compete against the company that controls the device, controls the operating system. Well, one very compelling thing is something that doubles every six months. Pretty and so compelling. how do you see I think Amazon and Facebook, they're the one, the challengers in the mobile space. I think that Amazon's got their own franchise. They can afford to ignore it if they want and they'll be fine. It's just an opportunity for them. For Facebook, I think it's a necessity for them. They need to build it into WhatsApp and into Facebook Messenger and into the core. Hmm. Otherwise they get squeezed. I think Apple and Google, it's an opportunity for them. And and if uh, if they don't move, then F Square and PayPal just get stronger and stronger until somebody notices. What is the next big news that drops? What's the next morning we wake up with? And it's like Tesla bought a billion of Bitcoin. What's the next news like that? Is it a big company? Is it, uh, I just kind of want to know your moonshot. I think the next news that'll drop is, is you'll see some big investment, like famous investment names, like uh, big macro investors or big, uh, big investors in the market. And then someone will say, yeah, we bought a billion dollars worth of it. Or we bought a lot of it and we're buying a lot more. Okay. I don't know which one, but it's, look, it's, Golly, there, there's 10,000 big companies that could buy a billion of this. There's 10,000 big investors <clears throat> that could buy a billion of this. And there's 10,000 individuals floating out there that could buy a billion of this. And that's the universe. And right now I announced I bought a billion. Elon Musk announced he bought a billion. You know, we've had a couple of announcements of 750 million. So, you know, you got 30,000 different players and there's not a lot of room in this thing. So it, at some point, you're gonna see uh, one, two, three more of them. They're gonna come out with serious news like that because, because it's possible and, it, and it's logical. It, it is sitting right there. Apple could raise $100 billion in debt at one or 2% interest. They could To raise compound it 200%. Money. Yeah. And, and again, the infinite, the, the leverage comes from the, uh, the cheap debt markets, the corporate debt markets, convert and secure debt market. That's the leverage. The fulcrum, the place to stand is Bitcoin. And so we're waiting to see which company is going to be the Archimedes. And they're going to use that leverage against that fulcrum to move the world. Uh, you know, and, and uh, yeah, it could be. I think, I think real, real, um, the real issue right now, or at least a subtle issue, is um, the, the accounting treatment if you buy the underlying Bitcoin is an intangible asset. And I think conservative CFOs, they're, they're kind of, uh, it, it creates a little bit of pause for them to buy billions and billions of dollars of an intangible asset because they'll have mm. to do non-GAAP accounting on a balance sheet item and explain it to their shareholders. And so if they don't do that, then they have to go and they have to buy it as a fund. And then they have to get comfortable that if they held it in a fund model that they would get gap accounting. And so I really think right now, working through the way they communicate it to their shareholder base and the way they account for it is what causes people to pause before they aggressively pursue this strategy.
So there's some very compelling reasons why Facebook is going to be the next big tech company to become a player in the Bitcoin game. Honestly, the arguments make a lot of sense. For those that weren't aware, Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook have a lot of directors and people on the inside that are very into cryptocurrency and blockchain. This is why they attempted to launch Facebook Libra, their own attempt at a cryptocurrency. However, ultimately, it was a failure. Mark Zuckerberg is also a very decisive CEO. He's fast to move, which can be seen behind his quick acquisition of Instagram in 2012, and then the acquisition of Oculus to get into the VR game, and then leaping into bidding to attempt to acquire Twitch when the Google acquisition failed to go through. I believe he will again move fast to be a part of the Bitcoin game. If another one of the big tech companies was to jump into the Bitcoin game, I would have to agree it's going to most likely be Facebook. But even if it's not Facebook, take a look at the top S&P 500 companies with the most cash on their balance sheets. This cash is going to be devaluing at 10 to 15% a year, so an investment of say 10 to 20% into Bitcoin would make a lot of sense and there is clearly a lot of cash available to allocate. He correctly predicted Tesla. If Michael Saylor gets this prediction correct and in a month or two we get the filing that Facebook has added Bitcoin to its balance sheet, we're going to have to start calling this man Mystic Mike because the man is a prophet. Now for some data that suggests where the Bitcoin price is likely to go from here, out from Lex Moskovsky, we have some analysis of the futures perpetual funding rate on all exchanges which is beginning to heat up once again. Funding represents when traders and investors are using leverage to buy Bitcoin instead of spot buying. This is a good reflection of investors' sentiment that they are optimistic on the future of the Bitcoin price heading higher. Great data to see and shows the market is getting increasingly bullish on Bitcoin. As this starts to warm up, it looks like to me that we are primed to a push into another all-time high and that the $60,000 price level will eventually fall. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed today's video and that provided you with some value. I'll see you in tomorrow's video and as always, have a great day.